Hello again, I am Blunty. So you've got a gaming laptop and they're fantastic. They have different limitations to a gaming desktop, of course. You know, they, they, they suit different needs, which is why they coexist side by side together. Some of us are lucky enough to have both, which is fantastic. But one of the first limitations you're likely to hit with a gaming laptop is storage space. They very often support only two drives. Usually they're sold with just one pre-installed, which is of modest size, good enough for a few games and your operating system and all the other bits and pieces you need to go with it. But sooner or later, you're going to want more because you're a real gamer, right? You have a vast library of games and you like to have as many as possible installed so you can just pick and choose what you feel like gaming on that particular day. Or is that just me? It can't be just me. It's not just me. Let me know. It's not just me, right? How, how much time do you spend browsing through your game library trying to figure out what you want to play that day? But the fact is, installing a drive in a laptop is a little more intimidating than doing so on a desktop computer. Desktop computers, they come apart very easy, lots of space inside, it's easy to get to the mounts, and I did a video on how to upgrade your storage space on desktop uh, computers the last time I did a video like this, which was also sponsored by WD, and that's what's happening here again. So uh, this is what we're going to use to demonstrate how easy and straightforward and uh, sort of demystify and de-stress uh, expanding your storage space on your gaming laptop. Specifically for this project, I'm using the WD Black SN750, which are <laughs> big and fast, just like I like it. I will, in a few easy steps, instantly dispel all of your bone-shaking terror about the possibly intimidating thought of chucking this in this, and then chucking a whole bunch of games on this to play with this. I think I did that in the right order. And by the way, you're going to get all of this done with a single tool. Well, a tool and a half, but we'll get to that. Uh, just a standard Phillips head screwdriver with a reasonably small tip on it. But in pretty much every case, disassembly of a laptop goes along very similar lines. Of course, they vary different from, from model to model. Maybe the screws are in a different place, but that's basically all there is to it. Usually it's just the bottom plate uh, is, is held on by a bunch of screws. There'll be some around the edge. There might be one or two in the middle. Look out for those ones, because I often forget to do those. I go around the edge and then go to pop the back off, and I forget about that little bugger there. And I did that for the first take of the disassembly I recorded for this video on, on, on for the B-roll. So don't feel bad if you miss a screw. <laughs> anyway, so you pull out all the screws, and a handy tip, by the way, is to, as you're removing the screws, put them down uh, on, a, on a piece of paper or a plate or on the desktop if you've got room, in the uh, shape and order of which they came out. So you do a line at the top, a line at the bottom, one's down the side. So when you go to put the screws back in, they go in the right place because it's very often the case with modern laptops, especially that normally have a sort of a thin edge at the front and a bit thicker at the back and things like that. They use different lengths of screws. So you want to make sure the screws go back in the same way as they came out. And the easiest way to do that is just to put them in the shape of, of the location where they came out. Your next step will be to remove the bottom plate. This is often usually still held on by some plastic little clippy doos that are molded into it. I mean, if you've ever taken anything apart, you're familiar with these. So the trick to that is get a spudger, what we call a spudger. That can be a little plastic shim, a credit card, um, something that's not going to damage your laptop too much. In the footage you're going to see, I'm using a, a knife, which is not the recommended tool, but it's what I have to hand and it's what I generally use. And if you're extraordinarily careful uh, with that, you, you're not really going to do much damage. But I would recommend a plastic tool or, or a butter knife or something a little bit blunter than what I was using, just so you know. Uh, do what I say, not what I do. I'm not leading by example very well here. Anyway, so pry up an edge. Once you get an edge or two up, you should be able to sort of use your fingers and run along the edge and pop up the rest of the little catches that are around there. Be gentle, be slow, because if you break these, it's, it's not good news. I mean, it's not the end of the world because, of course, there's others and they hold one up by screws, but, of course, you don't want to break them, do you? No. Uh, so, yeah, just take your time. Don't panic. Just take your time, be slow, and they'll eventually just pop off. Uh, once you get all the edges free, you can sort of lift up the back panel and you'll expose the insides of the laptop. Different laptops are all designed differently. Unlike motherboards, there is no standard layout for laptops. Different manufacturers do it different ways so they can jam in as much cool stuff as possible in their own way uh, and make sure their cooling works the way they want it to. So there's no sort of look in this bit, I can tell you. Uh, if you're confused about it, your manual might tell you, you know, go to the website of the manufacturer. You can find a user manual that will often tell you where the drive bays are and things like that. But they're usually pretty easy to spot because they want to make it easy for you to pop in more space. That's why the empty bays are there. They will come in either a 2.5 inch drive or the M.2 drive. We are using the M.2 drive today because this system already has a 2.5 drive in there at the moment. But when it comes to the M.2 drive, uh, once you find the slot that these go into, it's easy peasy. They only go in one way. It is keyed 
Uh, they've got a little slot in them. So you literally cannot put these in the wrong way round. There is usually a retaining screw that you will have to remove first in order to get the drive in. Once the drive clips in, don't worry if it bounces up and down a little bit. They're supposed to do that. It's very common. That's why they have a retaining screw. Uh, put the retaining screw back in and that's it. Your job literally done. That's all there is to it. Then you just sort of reverse what you did to take the back plate off. Put the thing back on, press it down, go around the edges to make sure those clips are sort of in, you know, located properly and then pop your screws back in and you're done. Just boot straight back into Windows and I'm going to kind of copy paste the procedure from here on in that I use for the other desktop version of this informative guide because it's exactly the same. So in Windows, load up your control panel by clicking the cog icon in the start menu, type disk into the search bar to quickly drill down to the option we're looking for and click on create and format hard disk partitions. Your newly installed disk will be sitting there indicated as unallocated. Right click on it, select create new simple volume, click next on the setup screen that appears and you can just kind of go ahead and accept all the default values from here on in. You can assign a custom drive letter if you like on your way past and give it a friendly name, give it a moment and that's job done. Your drive is installed, formatted, ready to throw a whole bunch of games on. Hopefully this has been helpful and informative to you and has completely demystified how potentially intimidating it can be to install a drive in your laptop. It is remarkably easy. So thank you again to WD for sponsoring this video and please join me in the down below area for thanking them as well. Say, say thank you WD for making Blunty make this video for us because it was handy and useful and informative and now I can do it myself without panicking because it's, it's surprisingly easy. Blunty's awesome. I'll, I'll put all of that in the down below area. Thanks for watching. I am Blunty. We'll catch you next time. I'm begging. I'm just fishing for compliments at this point. Just be nice to me. Just be nice to me in the comments. That's all I'm asking.